The Goat House is back after a Monday night football doubleheader where we saw a snot pounding and a rookie quarterback emerge. I'm here breaking down how I think every NFL team looked. In week three, we'll be placing them into tiers with grades, and we're going to do that right now. Several teams, unfortunately, make the Panthers tier, and none of the teams are the Carolina Panthers, actually, so good step for them. They step closer to getting this tier name removed if they keep playing like that, but the team they beat... The Raiders obviously are in this tier, not because they lost Carolina, but how they played. I mean, extremely disappointing to get their ass kicked to who was the worst team in football, maybe not anymore. The defense, didn't expect the defense to look like that. They, they were off, obviously, and offensively, they can't run the ball. They still can't run the ball. They rely on Minshew being the best possible Minshew he could be, and he was not that. So they're pretty one-dimensional. They were... And they didn't have that going. They didn't even have the passing game going in, in this game. And then it's even messier when, when you start talking about, you know, Antonio Pierce kind of talking about the, the motor of players and giving up and then talking about quarterback change possibly, and even though they're not going to do that. It just sounds messy. This team really has to rely on, again, the passing game being great and the defense, you know, Max Crosby carrying this group. Too much to rely on. I don't know how they beat the Ravens last week. Just brutal outing for them. The Bears, yeah, the matchup favored them in this game. How good the defense is, and they actually got free turnover. I mean, Richardson was gifting them, and they still couldn't pull this off. Offensively, you know, finally they should be able to move the ball. They should be able to run the ball. Their Colts are awful against the run, and Buckner's out. They can't really do that. Williams threw for some more yards, but he was still off. I mean, bad decisions. He's picking up some bad habits. The offensive line's bad. The play calling's bad. They don't look prepared. A Dunze got going. That was about it. But a, a game that, you know, a matchup favored them, and they just got completely embarrassed, really, even though the game was somewhat close some, some of the time. Titans going against Malik Willis. They should handle business in this game. And the defense has been great, but not in this game. Even the defense went south. Will Levis is struggling big time. Nothing going for this team. They look like they are one of the worst, in, or if not the worst, in football. The Bucks. Yeah, kind of came back down to earth given the injuries. I don't think they would look like this because if the injuries, but I guess the Lions it was a little surprising because they were a little beat up if they won that game. Maybe it was just week two stuff. Uh, but the, you know, they they really they got completely outplayed by the Broncos, who's been one of the worst teams in football. They couldn't they ran the ball, but they couldn't really convert. They had Baker flustered, you know, getting after him. The offensive line hasn't looked as good as, as it did in week one, the last couple weeks. Uh, and then defensively, they were off. They were playing like an injured defense. So is this the Bucks in, in the like the near near future because how injured they are? Patriots look like what we expected the Patriots to look like uh, on last Thursday night. Uh, just just stale. Nothing going for them. The defense wasn't even good. Uh, the offense looked exactly like how we thought. I mean, even actually less than that because even Stevenson played bad. He couldn't get going. So. Many predicted the Patriots to be the Patriots to be the worst team in football. They kind of look like that, possibly. A lot of teams joining them, uh, and the Jags just a little bit ago on Monday Night Football just completely embarrassed. This game was over from the start. Play calling's bad. Trevor Lawrence is bad. The offensive line's bad. I mean, even some drops out there, but that's really not the biggest worry right now. Um, and then defensively, I mean, where's the edge? There's no edge presence. Getting after the quarterback, but even on outside runs, you know. Uh, you expect these guys to be out there to contain or get angles. They're not there. And I think Ryan Nielsen's a good defensive coach. Doesn't seem like that right now. Just completely embarrassed and can't get a win. These teams were awful. Absolutely awful this week. And not all of them, but most of them have that in common where right now they're one of the worst teams in football. The Bucks really don't belong in that, but they, they got completely outplayed by the Broncos. Was it just a one-week thing? We will see. The D tier now, maybe a little generous for these teams, but I do have reasoning on why they are not the Panthers tier. By the score, it may look like the Texans got embarrassed, but I don't think they got embarrassed quite like the teams below them in the Panthers tier. I mean, they played... They played, a, I mean, apparently a really good team in the Vikings. And, you know, the game, it felt like they were still in the game for for a bit. You know, not like the scores show. End up, even though the Vikings did dominate them. So... Yeah, maybe a little generous, but just played a much tougher team. They didn't get good. They, they, I'm not left super confused like these other teams based on that performance, even though they did get completely outplayed. It's it's not quite on their level. Dolphins get dominated, but the defense actually kind of kept them in the game. There was a lot. There was a lot in their in their on their plate. They were putting the offense in good situations. Offense was brutal. Uh, you know, couldn't block. Thompson couldn't get rid of the ball. He got hurt, and they picked off Geno twice as well. So. Because the defense, 
I mean, not quite as embarrassing as the other teams below them. And then given the, the situation, the circumstances there uh, with Tua being out, but still you got to find ways. So it's not a good look going forward without Tua. Like, is this the Dolphins? They weren't even good with him. So, um, But only two teams in the D tier. Probably because a lot of teams were in the Panthers tier. Let's see who we got in the C tier. We do have a team that won up here, and we see that every week. But the Colts, and very close to being in the next tier, but... And the offense moved the ball against a pretty good defense, so they had that going for them. They got they created some turnovers, but you know Williams did push the ball which down the field, which he hasn't been able to do yet. And Richardson was still very sloppy; they were very off, still making bad plays, plays to lose them the game. They did find a way to win the game. It was a much needed win, but watching that game, it felt like it just two really bad teams, and it shouldn't be that way. Both these teams should be better, and they can get better. But I'm just telling you what it felt like, what I saw, and I'm sure a lot of you saw out there when watching this game. It felt like two really bad teams that whoever just played worse or made that extra mistake at the wrong time was going to lose the game. So it was just who, who who's going to lose this game is what it was. So they're at the top of the C tier. The Niners, I mean, Purdy played well. Jennings played well. I mean, they moved the ball. And I did feel like they outplayed the Rams for the most part in this game. So you, I almost wanted to put them in the BC tier, but... And I know they're really beat up, but the Rams are the most depleted team in football. They they had the lead in this game. They had control. They were again they're they're pushing the ball on offense. Like how do you not win this game? So that kind of bumps them down for it being a just embarrassing, unacceptable loss. Um, you know some drops, a little sloppiness, some drops, just key players carrying them, and defensively didn't love the way they were coached. And a missed field goal at the end, even though it was a tougher one. Uh, the Browns, yeah, I could argue multiple sides. Of the Browns here. You would think a little lower because, you know, they got spotted seven points basically and they were so sloppy, you know, with the pressure on Watson, not converting fourth down the fumble, you know, in crucial time towards the end of the game. Just, just, they were just sloppy, completely sloppy. And they lost to the Giants again after they, they should win the game, especially how it started. Uh, so that makes you want to put them lower. But given everything was going wrong for them, they were still very much in this game. And they're just some little tiny sloppy things that went against them, which was their fault. If they didn't, like if they figured it out, got that extra yard or didn't make the mistake in that point, they might have won the game, even though everything was kind of going against them in this game. So they were kind of marching back, and that's kind of why the Cowboys are here too. They were about to be in, in a much lower tier, but they and they're awful stopping the run. They got completely dominated in this game, regardless of the score. They they, they tried to come back. They almost didn't, it felt like something clicked. So we do bump them up a little bit. They do play a good team, even though the Ravens were on too. But felt like they're in the bottom of the C tier. You can just feel the differences between the, the – they're all bad for the most part, at least the Colts won, but you can kind of feel the difference between each of these tiers, even though a lot of them are on the negative side here. Not all of them, but all uh, a lot of them. The BC tier, the Bengals just played. Yeah, they were a tough one to tier. Uh, you know, disappointing loss. They are tough to tier because the offense – I can't say lights out, but, I mean, the way they move the ball, I mean, seeing Joe, per Joe Burrow have that touch – Again, Jamar Chase get going. T. Higgins being physical and being out there with the the running backs were doing good. They're both of them, you know, they're averaging good yards per carry. Uh, they were moving the ball. wasn't perfect though because sometimes they couldn't execute in the red zone. They did miss a field goal in this game as well. Um, so offense wasn't perfect, but they played very well. They did enough to win offensively. But the defense was so bad. I mean, that does not look like a Bengals defense. I know they're beat up on the interior. With the pass defense, the lack of pressure. I mean, it felt like Hendrickson had to carry this defense. Uh, Lou Anaroma, I know he's a good defensive coach, but it just does not feel like his defense. So if you're ranking off defense, you can put him in the Panthers tier. If you're ranking off offense, I mean, the offense had a hell of an outing. So I put them in the BC tier, close to C, but mm, so maybe it's a little generous, but it, it was a explosive game. They did enough offensively, and they're heading in the right direction. More steps in the last couple weeks on offense. The Chargers, yeah, I mean, disappointing loss. I mean, it sucks that you had so many key guys get injured and what it means for, for the near future, you know, the next few games and Derwin James has been in now. So that, you know, they're a loser because of that and they lost the game. But, man, they were actually outplaying the Steelers and then it, for the most part, then it was kind of even. And then, you know, Bosa goes down. You have both tackles go down and you have your star quarterback go down. I mean, those four players... Those got to be your four most important players, four out of the top five at least, you know. And and I know things slipped away from them, but man, they they were. I felt like for the, for the most part they were either outplaying or even with the series before then. So they were playing a decent game. It was kind. Of, it's for their for a hardball type game, 
before those injuries. So they have to be in this tier. Cardinals, kind of disappointing offensively. Yeah, they made, they made some explosive plays still. I mean, Kyler was still all right. Uh, was a little disappointing in the run game. They couldn't get that going. Uh, but defensively, they were they were decent. They couldn't really stop the run, but they were pretty decent. They kind of kept them in the game in this one. So, yeah, I, I didn't really feel like they were a C tier team. They were kind of in the bottom, towards the bottom of the of the B C tier. Saints a battle with the Eagles. They probably did, uh, it's hard to say they did enough to win defensively. They probably did, even though the Eagles did move the ball. They couldn't stop Saquon. Saints were kind of catching some more I'm talking. They were kind of catching some breaks that Sirianni was making some questionable decisions. But they were clutching up, making big-time plays. The defense was really solid. Uh, but offensively, they kind of came back down to earth a little bit. It did feel like they had that game, but they let it slip away there. But, you know, they still played with a really good team and had a chance to win, and they played really good defense. The Steelers at the top of this tier, they're 3-0. and I mean, overall, it's a win. You, 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 uh, you beat a 2-0 and team, and you move on to 3-0. and and the defense looks great. T.J. Watt, probably the defensive player of the year, if you know at this early stage of the season ended today, defense has been great. Offensively, you know, Fields doing all right. They 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 really f- kind of figured out a groove at the end of that game. They were throwing the ball a little bit downfield, making plays. Uh, yeah, you know, the only thing is, I kind of wish the Chargers stayed healthy, and we saw how this game played out because it was so good. I thought. The Chargers were slightly outplaying the Steelers, then kind of getting close to even, and then the four most important players of the Chargers go down, and that kind of and the Steelers kind of take advantage. So it's hard to say. Like yes, they were lights out. Like things kind of went their way a little bit. There was one driver. It was like flag after flag, but uh, they're three and zero. They look good. Defense looks great. They're able to make plays and pull away in this one. Uh, so they are at the top of this tier. The B tier. The Seahawks dominate the Dolphins. They were a little sloppy on offense. I'd say Charbonnet was good. Last week was the passing game. No running game this week. The running game and there's somewhat of a passing game. Um, you know, trying, thought they were trying to force things in the passing game that wasn't necessary. Geno threw two picks. Uh, defense has been great. You know, it kind of should be going against Dolphins like that. I told you they'd be sneaky this year. So far, they're sneaky, but they're at the top of the B tier. Ravens were probably about to be higher, maybe. Uh, they were dominating the Cowboys. It was purely off the ground. That's kind of the, the downside of this, finally getting a win. They're, the Ravens were trying to win in different ways in the previous weeks because why they keep coming up short and why are they so good in the regular season? They keep coming up short in the playoffs. They don't really have the formula to win the big, big, big games or win the you know, in the playoffs in the Super Bowl. You know, they're mainly a running team. They have like if they have they have one thing they kind of relied on for the most part. They can win in other ways. They're a really good team, but so they were trying to win with more of a passing attack and not running as much as they possibly can the the past couple weeks, and it wasn't really fully working. And they were losing. So this week they have to go back to their old ways, and the Cowboys are awful stop and stop and run, and they take advantage of that, and it looks great. It's you know. It's all great, but you know you kind of expect those things. And then they let the Cowboys kind of come back in this one, which is a little bit scary. The defense doesn't really feel like the same as what it used to be, but still they were insane on the ground. The defense played uh, pretty well for a portion of this. They're going to be in the B tier. Eagles' uh, defense stepped up. Defense really stepped up in this game better than expected. Uh, offensively, Saquon was awesome. Goddard was awesome. The running game was awesome. Yeah, no Brown. Then Lane Johnson goes down, and then – Devontae Smith goes down. Man, they're close to being the A tier. The more I talk about it, because the guys that went down, they're able to find a way. But at the same time, you know, there was some pretty bad coaching in this game. I thought Hertz was off in this game. I really thought he was he was off. Um, so some questionable things. Like they were able to move the ball and they go away from Saquon, put the game in Hertz's hands, and things things were and they were kind of relying on yeah, they Barkley one big play, Goddard one big play. If it wasn't for that, they probably lose. But those plays happen, so I'm not one of those people who are like, "Oh, if you, those didn't happen, they lose." Even though that it kind of is the case, but they made those plays happen still. So overall, a good outing. Was impressed with the defense for the most part. They're in the high end B tier. Rams, uh, yeah, the Rams very very impressive because they're depleted more than anybody. I mean, I don't know if it's even possible to be more injured. Uh, and they beat the 49ers. I know they're a little beat up, but they beat the 49ers. They come back. They win. Stafford, awesome. Kyron Williams, awesome. Guys making plays on both sides of the ball. So you almost want to put them in the A tier because of that, given the circumstances. But it's close. But they uh, they did get outplayed for a majority of this game, even though, they, even though they found a way to win. But they go into B tier. Falcons lost, but I'm going to put them in the B tier. When I watched that game, I watched a game between two Really good football team. That's kind of what my takeaway was. It felt like two good teams that are going to be playing in the postseason because they are that good. 
And the Falcons, oh, they did enough to win that game. I hated that last play call on fourth down, an outside run with two guys in the backfield, kind of taking away a guy off the line of scrimmage, away from blocking. I hated that play call. Um, you know, I believe in the coaching staff that you know, especially the play calling, but not there. That was awful. I thought the players did enough to win, and they're showing they're gonna. Their peak is still not even close, and that's a great thing. So, uh, defense made plays in the red zone. I thought they played. It felt like two really good teams going at it, and they just just fell short. So I put them in the B tier. I thought they were more impressive than some teams that won actually. Like quite clearly to me the a tier the commanders who just played i almost want to put them in the best tier but the defense was so bad that we that we couldn't do that i mean the red zone defense kind of clutched up that was a a, a kind of a sneaky big reason they won but they couldn't stop the bengals uh too much man coverage too too much separation um so i i do worry about the defense a little bit but man oh man it's all it's really positivity with with the commanders because that offense was awesome Jaden daniels was awesome. You don't really see rookies play like that really ever. You're definitely not seeing the other rookies play like that, even though Bo Nix picked it up a little bit this week. It's just a great sign for Daniels and his offense. And let's, let's, you know, significant, I talked about on Twitter, significant improvement from even last week to this week for Daniels. And you see Dan, the quarterback play better. Everybody plays better. I mean, Terry McLaurin has already been good, you know, already was good among other players quarterback plays better the whole offense looks better so you see how it works so that's why you know people are kind of making too many excuses for the quarterback sometimes but if they just go out there do their thing not make mistakes uh, you, you know and, and um and just execute everybody will be better so it's a really good sign for Jaden daniels here and it looks like the sure looks like the commanders have themselves a quarterback but uh they have a lot of upside and that's a good thing going forward so it's, it's actually a team to get Really excited about here. The defense was off, though. Uh, looks like we're going reverse order here. The Giants. Yeah, Giants stepped up. They look like they got better each week. They put up a good fight with the Commanders last week. Uh, who knows what happened if Gano was in there. Uh, and then this week, they outplay the Browns. The defensive front looks really good. Daniel Jones getting better. Singletary getting better. Neighbors is unreal. So they're, they're, overall, they're, it just feels like they're getting better, and they're doing a really good job. So they were very productive in this game uh, You know, on both sides. So I, I was very impressed with the Giants. The Lions, yeah, I thought about this one because the offense kind of, you, you're kind of left wanting a little bit more, like could, could Goff take care of the ball a little bit more? Could they, you know, could do a little bit more in the passing game, get more points on the board because we know they're capable and we see them move the ball. So that was maybe a, a tiny bit underwhelming, but defense looks really solid. The defense can help them very much win games. They played a really good offense. You thought that would be a shootout because the way these offenses match up against each other, defense really stepped up. The run defense is something. And that's the run defense being good is a really good, hopefully McNeil's okay, but really good sign because there are very, 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 very few good run defenses in football right now. And it's actually super important, especially for playoff football. Uh, and you see the season in general, the way teams are running things offensively. So, that's a great sign, and they were still super productive on offense. They ran the ball. Montgomery, Gibbs, they're, they're a two-headed monster. When, when you see their, their run game in, in, in action, it's something. It's something. So I still think the Lions were eight here. The Chiefs, yeah, the Chiefs could execute a little bit better in, in the red zone, I, I suppose, or continuing drives. You'd think they, could have, they left some points out there. But explosive, clutch on defense, you know, making big-time plays. Again, I talked about with the Falcons. When I watched this game, it just really felt like two – Really good football. It's not really a surprise either. We know the Chiefs are really good. And I'm pretty damn sure the Falcons are good. They're, that's a hell of a one and two team. But it just felt like two really good postseason football teams going at it. And the Chiefs come out on top. And the Jets clicked. They looked much better. Looked like more of that Jets team that we thought, you know, they we, who we thought they were, who we thought they were going to be uh, this year. Clicking on offense, you know, perfect world. Yeah, they could extend some more drives, I suppose. Perfect world, but look good on both sides of the ball. So it's a good sign for them as long as they stay healthy. Moses goes, uh, Morgan Moses goes down, uh, but very close to being in best here. But a lot of teams are up there. But these teams are, did great, a eh? and the best here. I mean, the Vikings absolutely dominated one of the best teams in football so far. The Texans they're looking like an insane defense under Brian Flores. They're leading in sacks. They're, they got some historic numbers sack wise, and offensively they're playing very well, running the ball, throwing the ball. Um, they look like one of the better teams in football. Panthers dominate the Raiders. They look actually like a football team when Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton looked good. Hubbard looked good. They actually have weapons. Quarterback plays better. Talk about Jane Daniels, him stepping up. Everyone else is better. 
And the quarterback play for the Panthers is better. Hey, look, they got weapons. They have a they have a system. That's why it, these are good examples of why people are are blaming everything but the quarterback too much. Quarterback play is and, and it's not. I'm not saying it's never you know the the supporting cast fault and think I'm and, and definitely coaches and players make things harder on players for sure and they can maybe they're not getting the most out of him because of that so I agree with that but Andy Dalton comes in and all of a sudden the Panthers got weapons that can make plays no they already have those veteran guys you know so a guy a quarterback comes in plays well everyone else looks better and Canales is a really good coach his system looks good now because the quarterback actually ran it so Daniel's a good example of other you know the whole offense being picked up because the of just better quarterback play and Andy Dalton another great in a different way because one was replaced, one stayed in, um, obviously. So uh Panthers great, just dominated the Raiders. Packers, I mean, another week with a backup quarterback, and they look great. They look like a complete team, playmakers on defense. Uh, they played a really good defense. The Titans are one of the worst teams in football. That defense statistically was at the top of the NFL, and they moved the ball. They absolutely moved the ball. They can throw the ball. They can run the ball. They can do anything, it feels like. So absolutely dominant when they weren't supposed to be in this one, and that's without their star quarterback. So awesome from the Packers. Very well coached. Broncos dominated the Buccaneers. I mean, they absolutely dominated them from start to right away. You could feel it. You could feel it offensively, defensively. Bo Nick steps up a little bit. Uh, they were just completely better than the Bucs on that. On Sunday, on that day. And the Bills continue to roll this game what, what, two weeks in a row for them in prime time. Once again, was over instantly. Defense is making big-time plays. Uh, getting pressure on the quarterback constantly. Secondary very well coach making plays. Offensively, Josh Allen, probably the MVP if the season were to end at this early stage. Barkley got to be up there. Um collection of guys making plays the offense looks offense a lot offense looks great and the play calling the play designs look great they could beat you in so many different ways there's just so much to their game right now James Cook looks great everything everything looks great they continue to roll and then Jags look pretty bad uh but the team's got talent the Bills made them look really bad I think it's more of the Bills made them look really bad than are they and there's a little bit of both they are really bad right now but just so impressed with the Bills one of the better teams in football right now uh, yeah, the uh, we talk about the, we know the Chiefs are probably you know at the, you know the Chiefs are at the top you know, but who looks the best right now based on their playing? You got to put the Bills and maybe the Viking, you know, the Bills and the Vikings up there, uh, maybe be putting the Packers up there. The Packers are doing great without Love, uh, but if they had him, you know maybe they'd be looking even better right now than they already are, even though they're winning without him. But um, yeah, so there you have it. For my tiers, yeah, a lot of these are a little debatable. You can slide them up, slide them down, and they're pretty close. But this is what I came up with for this week um, based on what I saw. And some people, for some reason, in the comments think these are power rankings. I don't know what makes you think that. The power rankings are the next video. So get ready for that one. Turn notifications on so you don't miss any of it. Loads of content on here and on our Twitter. So join us for all that. Uh, we had a recent big winners and losers video go up. Check, check that out. Uh, cannot wait for week four picks with the boys. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.